Thank you for being with us. Uh, it's election night across the country tonight, off your election. So that means that there's elections of various shapes and sizes all over the country. Some of them are going to prove to be very, very consequential, including in the great state of Virginia tonight. Every seat in the Virginia legislature was on the ballot tonight. Every state House seat, every state Senate seat. Democrats control the statewide offices already in Virginia, but this meant that control of the legislature was on the ballot as well. Well, the Associated Press has now called it for the Democrats in the state legislature. Democrats have flipped enough seats tonight to gain control of the state house and the state Senate in Virginia. That big double flip tonight means that Democrats have control of all the statewide offices in the state. They've also got control of the state legislature in the state, and that puts Democrats in complete control of Virginia state government for the first time in 26 years. Of course, the further big news tonight is out of Kentucky, where the Democratic state attorney general, Andy Bashir, has turfed out Republican incumbent Governor Matt Bevin. NBC News has called Andy Bashir the apparent winner in this Kentucky governor's race, which will frankly send shockwaves through not just Kentucky politics, but through national politics for a long time, given that Kentucky is a state that Donald Trump won in 2016 by, oh, say, 30 points. Here to help us make sense of these election results tonight is MSNBC national political correspondent, the indefatigable Steve Karnacki. All right, Rachel. Well, let's begin in Kentucky. Andy Bashir, you just mentioned it, the Democrat taking out Matt Bevin, the incumbent Republican. Obviously, the backdrop here, this a big Trump state in 2016. He won it by 30 points. He was there the other night trying to get Matt Bevin across the finish line. Why did Bevin fall short? Why was Bashir able to win? There are a couple of things to talk about here, a couple of factors that went into this. Number one was just in the Democratic areas of Kentucky. There are not many Democratic areas in Kentucky, but in the Democratic areas that do exist, Exist. The turnout, the support level for Bashir was through the roof. Let me show you what I mean. Jefferson County, Louisville, city of Louisville is their biggest county in the state by far. Look at this. The margin of victory here for Bashir over Bevin in this county, 100,000, almost 100,000 vote difference here. In, uh, for, in some context here, the last time around when Bevin got elected in 2015, the Democratic margin in this county was just 37,000. So it exploded from 37,000 up to 100,000. You saw a similar dynamic here, Fayette County. This is where Lexington is, the University of Kentucky. Again, 36,000 vote plus difference there. Bashir beating Bevin by. It was only 10,000 for the Democrat in the last gubernatorial election. So that helped for Democrats. There were other factors, though, as well. Another was, we talk about this, the suburbs. We talk about nationally, suburban areas, traditionally Republican areas that have moved towards the Democrats, moved away from Donald Trump in this era. You saw that in the suburbs of northern Kentucky, suburbs of Cincinnati. Cincinnati's just over the Ohio River, other side uh, on the Ohio line there. But these three counties in particular in northern Kentucky, big suburban counties, about 10 percent of the state population in these three counties, and they swung pretty dramatically. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Boone County. Yes, Matt Bevin won this. He got 56 percent of the vote when he got elected governor four years ago. He got 66 percent of the vote in this county. This is the kind of county Republicans usually depend on to drive up their margins. He didn't drive it up here like he did last time, like he's supposed to do, like a Republican is supposed to do. Kenton County next door. Matt Bevin won this thing easily in 2015. Look, he lost it. He got 57 percent of the vote here last time around. Tonight, he lost it outright to, uh, to Bashir. Same thing in Campbell County. Bevin won this thing by 10 points last time around. Tonight, he loses it by six. So population-dense suburbs in northern Kentucky really dramatically moving away from Bevin and towards Bashir. That's the second part of the formula for Bashir. Even that, though, those two things alone, or those two things together, wouldn't have been enough. The third ingredient that got Bashir across the finish line here uh, in Kentucky Rural Eastern Kentucky. This is a part of the state that really you talk about Kentucky decades ago was a Democratic state. Still a lot of Democrats there in Kentucky. They're culturally conservative and they tend to vote Republican, overwhelmingly Republican in presidential elections. This part of the state, rural Eastern Kentucky. Look at this. A county like Bath County. Andy is a small county, but Bashir wins this by six points. Look at that. Trump won it by 37. It was Republican. It was Trump by 37 points. Tonight, Democrats win it by six points. That's a swing of more than 40 points. And you have swings like that. A lot of these blue counties here in eastern Kentucky, it's a very similar story. 
So that's the third ingredient for Bashir. Rural parts of the state that are ancestrally Democratic. The folks who were there, their parents all were kind of Democrats. They inherited the Democratic registration. They kept it. They vote Republican in national levels. They went with Bashir tonight. That was an essential ingredient for him. So those are the three sort of things that went into that. Uh, also, we we'll get to the other governor's race tonight. There was a second governor's race in Mississippi. Tate Reeves, the Republican, were declaring him the apparent winner here. The reason for the hesitation, because his margin is strong there, the reason for the hesitation is Mississippi has an unusual procedure. You have to win a majority of the popular vote. You also have to win a majority of the state legislative districts. There are 122 of them in Mississippi. And frankly, we won't have the final count on that probably till tomorrow. We think just based on the vote return pattern that he's probably got somewhere in the 70s, well into the 70s. He'll easily hit that number. We think that'll happen, but we want to see that happen before we officially characterize him as the winner. But certainly you just look at the vote totals there. Tate Reeves, certainly when it comes to the popular vote, the comfortable winner there. And finally, the the final story. And, and Rachel, you mentioned this as well. The state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, the House of Delegates, Republicans came into the night with a narrow advantage there. There was one vacant seat. It was a Democratic seat. So really, a 50, I'm doing 49. Really, it was 51-49 coming in tonight. The Associated Press says Democrats have picked up five, a net gain of five, the AP says, for Democrats on the House of Delegates side. That is enough to get the Democrats into control there on the state Senate side. Again, there was a vacancy, so it came into tonight 21-19, essentially. It was a Republican vacancy, so it's 21-19, essentially. And the Associated Press says the Democrats have picked up two seats there, net gain of two. They needed... To, they needed one because a 2020 tie, they would have been able to break with a lieutenant governor's vote. So the Democrats, the AP says, get the state Senate. The Democrats get the House of Delegates. The Democrats already have the governor uh, in Virginia. They have the lieutenant governor. They have the attorney general. The Democrats have complete control of Virginia state government. And just again, to put that in some perspective, the transformation politically, the state of Virginia these are presidential election results in Virginia going back to 1968, basically going back a half century here. And you look at this. These are Republican margins here, right? Down through the years, we used to call this just a safe Republican state. We didn't even think about it in presidential elections, right? And it started to change eh, Barack Obama, somewhere between George W. Bush and then Barack Obama in 2008. Remember that Barack Obama carried the state. Of course, he won very comfortably nationally. So that was right in line with kind of the national number. 2012, Barack Obama got reelected. 2016, Hillary Clinton carried it by six points, better than her national number. If you think ahead to 2020 in Virginia, remember we were talking this week about all those swing state polls, all those battleground state polls in the presidential election, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Michigan. Virginia wasn't on that list. Wasn't that long ago, Virginia would have been the first state on that list when it came to swing states. We're not even talking about Virginia as much of a swing state anymore. Used to be a red state became a swing state. And I think now between that 2016 result and what you see here, complete control of the state government in Virginia, this is a blue state now. So I think that you can maybe, we've been talking about that evolution for a while. This might be the night that really kind of becomes official. So big picture here. Look, Democrats are thrilled at what they get out of Kentucky. A narrow win, but they won the governor's race in Kentucky. Republicans will say, hey, yes, but we won solidly in Mississippi. And Democrats will come back and say, OK, how about Virginia? How about that state that used to be a Republican state now? Again, completing uh, that transformation pretty much uh, into a blue state. So, look, there's something for, uh, for everybody to sort of brag about tonight. Uh, but I think certainly the headline tonight is that the incumbent, the incumbent governor, uh, you did see a governor go down uh, in the state of Kentucky. And again, it was right after the president's visit there. So certainly all eyes were on that. Uh, but uh, a, a very fascinating election night. Wish we did these more often. Anyway, Rachel Maddow will be right back after this. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.